Hey, how's it going? It's Manny again, and I'm going to reconvene with my um, uh, presentation of voltage drop, and we're going to get into the switching arrangement, talk a little bit about that, a little bit more about that. So let's just move over into it, and here's the panel of switching arrangement using the same model. Now we discussed this model here, remember? Just to keep it simple, here is your plugs, right? If I had to go from here to here, you can follow the purple line and so on and so forth, right? From here to here to here, over to here to here, as I described before, right? The distance might exceed from your panel to the furthest point it might very well exceed 125 feet and that would be in violation of this code 8-102 with reference to the charting of it okay um, and if you're going to go and measure with your uh, voltmeter uh, you're going to see that you're going to be dropping lower than 3% which is uh, not only recommended and suggested it is um, implemented by code that you can't go below 3% voltage drop and I'm going to talk a little bit about that more let me just describe this layout over here now this is a switching arrangement now here's your panel maybe I should use the pencil here's your panel over here this is the upper floor of a raised bungalow and downstairs let's say it's just the first floor raised bungalow and half into the basement type of deal, half out. Um, here we have a couple of wall mounts, gounces, right? There's a fan in this bedroom one uh, that is just a fan alone. Um, I have fire alarms uh, in each bedroom, right? And in the hallway as well. Uh, it could be a combination of monoxide, carbon monoxide, and smoke detectors uh, working all together we're not talking about that right now but they're fire alarms and here's a light into this hall okay that's going to work from the head of the stairs down to the foot of the stairs three-way uh, here's a plug into the hallway here's a light outlet that's going to supply for a fixture and the same with bedroom two and bedroom three a fixture a piece here's your switches uh, right before the door openings right and this is the layout okay so here we go let me just get my red marker how I would wire this now you want to be strategic as I mentioned in this diagram you want to be strategic with um, breaking the wire and stemming off into different little zones because those little zones will not account into the distance of the voltage drop as long as it doesn't exceed 125 feet and it's when you do stem off into little zones you stay safe you keep it short and it's good for resistance resistivity right and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that more so look we have the panel over here. The panel is over here on the first floor of this raised bungalow. Um, I would feed, okay, um, I should have taped this down. Sorry, let me just take this down quickly. I highly apologize about this. Um, there we are, back on track. Sorry about that. From the panel, okay. I'm going to feed, okay, using 14.2 up to this fire alarm. And I know I can use 14.2 because I just know that I won't exceed, once it's all said and done, once it's all worked out, I won't exceed 125 feet. So I'm assured that I can feed from the panel to here, to this smoke detector. Um, now smoke detectors need to be interconnected throughout the whole dwelling so I'm just gonna proceed forward 14.3 here 
14.3 over here, a 14.3 okay, to each fire alarm, and that's going to finish off downstairs. I went to the exterior wall, dropping down into the first floor, and that's going to end up somewhere in the hallway there. Um, I did that purposely because I'm going to, as, as I mentioned before in the plug diagram, I'm going to stem off my smokes and feed my bedrooms, lights, what have you, right? Because it's going to keep things very short through the stemming process rather than just going from the panel to the switch to the next switch to the next switch to the next switch because if you do it that way right you're staying you're, you're going to end up at a switch and at a further point of switch and if that further point of switch ends up picking up let's say 12 pot lights or 15 or whatever the circuit rating let's say there's even 18 pot lights rated at you know 45 watts it's the whole distance of those 18 pot lights plus the, the main um, branch from going switch in, switch out, power in, power out, power in, all the way to the panel. That might exceed 125 feet for sure. Okay, and measuring the before any load is applied, you might be in trouble there. So I'm going to get a little bit into that more. So I would feed from the smoke detector. I'm going to go ahead and feed this light with a two wire. And I'm going to control it with this switch over here uh, from the same location as well. I'm going to go here with the two wire to this uh, three-way, right? That's going to go... 14.3 up here and down to the foot of the stairs with a 14.3 right um, into bedroom 2 from the smoke detector I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to go 2 wire to the light a 2 wire to the hall plug and a 2 wire to the switch so that got done um, finishing off the rough in in bedroom one from the smoke detector in the bedroom one I'm going to go to the two gang feed it and I'm going to run a jumper over here to the fan alone and I'm gonna go here and here and pick up those wall mount lights I think that's everything yes Okay, so now I'm just going to point out which actually is the furthest point of utilization from the panel, um, as code has it. So we came over here with a 14.2. I fed this first smoke detector or a combination, what have you. Um, then it moves on here to the hall smoke it goes into the bedroom smoke detector here right it goes to the two gang over here feeding this light and this light this light here is my furthest point of utilization given this uh, wiring method right from here, okay, to here, you see how these break up? Is not going to actually, it comes over here and here, right? That is not going to be more than 125 feet, right? From here to here. This one, if you stretch it out, it's that's probably my longest main line, right? The same thing with this, okay? So ending in this plug over here, coming around straight down, can't exceed 125 feet, which it's not because I've stemmed it. I've stemmed it in different parts. And I do that purposely 
to stay under that distance. So given all these stemmings from the branch, I know that this line is going to be furthest point of utilization. Now, let me just talk about this uh, relative to uh, nominal values. Now, we have the Ontario Code for Voltage Drop, Rule 8-102 for the year 2000. Actually, this was implemented 2014, but I'm shooting this video right now in 2015, so just for that to be registered. Um, here is your panel. Now, these are two examples. All right, here is your panel. And here's two examples that I have one line that goes to the feed, uh, which feeds this receptacle. And I have another feed that's going to go and feed this switch, which is going to switch out to uh, four pot lights. Okay. So from here, counting your whole distance all the way back to the panel can't be more than... 125 feet using 14 gauge wire. The same thing with this from your panel all the way to your receptacle. Let's say there's a dedicated load. You can't, you know, go over uh, 125 feet. Now, this only applies for general plugs and lights, right? Just general plugs and lights throughout the dwelling of a residential dwelling. So 125 feet maximum using 14 AUG at 3% voltage drop at a 120 volts line, All right? Not 110, not 115, it's 120 volts. Um, 120 volts times point, uh, 0.03% is going to leave you with 3.6 volts, right? So that number, you're going to subtract it from 120 volts. So 120 volts take away 3.6 volts is going to give you 116.4 volt, 116 volts, right? This is what you're dealing with at 3% voltage drop per code. You can't go below 116 because you're going to round it down. You can't go below 116 volts. So if you're going to go right with your digital multimeter and you're going to come over here and knowing that this is the furthest point of utilization and you take the fixture off and you go with your leads and you test it okay, before any load is applied. If you're below 116 volts, let's say it's fluctuating at 113, 114, 113, 112, 113.7, 113.8, 113, 112.5, you violated the code. You violated the code. It's your the installation is wrong. The inspector can fail you. Um, the same thing with here, like if had you went in and out, in and out, and in and out, right, without stemming uh, three-wire plugs, if you kept following the purple line, if you would have went in and out, in and out, in and out, and you're going to go over here and measure the furthest point of utilization from the panel, one big long circuit, and you go here with your tester and your leads to the, to the plug, if you're below 116 volts, you violated the code. You've done the job wrong, basically. Uh, if the inspector f figures that out, which is very easy to figure out, he's going to give you a defect and fail your project. That means you're going to have to go chop the circuit in half somewhere, right? And you're going to have to refeed it, bringing another feed to pick up a portion. So now you have to fish, do fish wires and stuff like that. Right, so it's important to know that, right? Because it can easily happen. 
if you're pulling long runs, you know, three, four, five uh, thousand foot square house, uh, you got to really watch yourself, right? It, this really doesn't happen in townhouses, but if you're in a, a big occupancy uh, dwelling, you know, above like five, six thousand feet, you really, really have to know how to wire things up according to the voltage drop. And it really applies everywhere, right? It could even apply with a doorbell, right? At a 12 volt transformer. If you're gonna run a second secondary chime somewhere down the line, uh, you wanna really upsize your wire, okay? Because your dinging won't probably make it all the way if you're gonna put a, a chime all the way at the way end of the hall, if it's gonna exceed a certain distance, right? And, you know, even that, you could probably have to upsize the the transformer itself, right, to 24 volt, or I think the highest is 30, uh, 30 volt uh, transformer, right, to give it that real ding that it needs. So voltage drop applies in a lot of different scenarios, in a lot of different cases. So I hope that kind of made sense uh, in residential installations. Thanks for watching. Take care.